Spurgeon. <laughs> I couldn't think of who it was. We're like, who is that guy? You know, God gives us a better appreciation in life as we go through it when he brings out of us some of the things that are inside of us that we didn't know were there. Because then we begin to get less of the idea of our own righteousness and more of the idea of God's mercy. Because it really is God's mercy that we are not consumed. It's his mercy that causes us to recognize that we really don't deserve grace and that grace was his way of demonstrating his love. But beyond that, there is an expression that we don't really appreciate fully unless we know how bad we are. And that's his mercy, is that when we deal with other people, because we have received mercy, we ought to give mercy to them. We ought to be merciful as He is merciful to us. We don't give to them something they deserve. We give to them something they don't deserve, not because it's grace we're giving them, though that does apply, but it's because of mercy that we care to share grace. And mercy is the emotion of grace. It causes us to be tender-hearted, to be sensitive to one another, to be so consumed by the idea that Jesus died for us and he loves us so much that we need to and we ought to share the same love with others in a merciful way, not a condemnation, because anybody can condemn you. Anybody can act like they have the right to condemn, but they don't because they were given mercy. And Jesus portrayed that so many times in many of his parables that we need to be merciful more than we are judgmental, more than we condemn, more than we contend for the faith or we contend for righteousness or we try to save and make our own religion out of what Jesus demonstrated, but rather in a relationship <coughs> because we have one with God, we need to be as unto God merciful because he's been merciful to us in Spurgeon have mercy upon me O God from Psalms when Dr. Carey was suffering from a dangerous illness the inquiry was made if this sickness should be proved if this sickness should prove fatal what passage would you select as the text for your funeral sermon. He replied, Oh, I feel that such a poor sinful creature is unworthy to have anything said about him. But if a funeral sermon must be preached, then let it be from the words, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. In the same spirit of humility, he directed in his will that the following inscription and nothing more should be cut on his gravestone. William Carey, born August 17, 1761, died. A wretched, poor, and helpless worm, on thy kind arms I fall. Only on this footing of free grace can the most experienced and most honored of the saints approach their God. The best of men are conscious above all others that they are men at the best. Empty boats float high, but heavily laden vessels are low in the water. More professors can boast but true children of God cry out for mercy upon their unprofitableness. We have need that the Lord should have mercy upon our good works, upon our prayers, our preachings, our almsgiving, and our holiest things that we think we ought. The blood was not only sprinkled upon the doorpost of Israel's dwelling houses, but upon the sanctuary, the mercy seat, the altar, because as sin intrudes into our holiest things, the blood of Jesus is needed to purify them from defilement. If mercy be needed to be exercised towards our duties, what shall be said of our sins? How sweet the remembrance that inexhaustible mercy is awaiting to be gracious to us, to restore our backslidings, and to make our broken bones rejoice. Insofar as God is holy and righteous and true, then we know that as we approach Him, our first response should be, Have mercy upon me, O God. For I am a sinner, and I need your tender mercies and your loving kindness to restore unto me the joy of thy salvation that you have done in your grace and your kindness for me that I couldn't do for myself. 
So always we ought to be mindful of the mercy of God that causes even today us to find ourselves to acknowledge to ourselves that because we were given mercy, we must, not we should, but we must extend mercy to others. And in like manner, we'll find mercy from God.